And the puzzle is this. It's basically a crossword page puzzle. Um, a coin is going to be repeatedly flipped until it stop, until the first time it throws a tail. And then when that's happened, the total number of throws is going to be counted and written down as n. And then if somebody has bought a ticket to enter a gamble about this, uh, this procedure, then a person who's bought a ticket will receive a prize of 2 to the n pounds. So then the question is, um, how much would you pay for a ticket to enter such a gamble? Um, a perfectly legitimate answer is zero, because you think gambling is morally wrong. So in that case, um, if you were recommending to someone who was really keen on having a flutter and asked you, how much should I pay for a ticket to enter such a gamble, um, what would you tell them? I asked this to my data analysis students. They were, they were pretty good, except one of them was a cheapskate and said one pound, because then I'm guaranteed to get back more than I've invested. <laughs> It's technically a good answer, but um, how much would anybody suggest might be a, a good price at which you'd be willing to buy the ticket? Well, Jethro? I was going to say one pound. A pound? <laughs> <laughs> Even before you suggested that. <laughs> it's a theoretical gamble. Shame. You're advising someone imaginary as to how much they should pay. Any advances on a pound to say it's worth more than that to someone? No. I remember reading about something very similar recently, but the expectation is that it, it's unbounded, so... That's right. The answer is that you would pay an infinite amount of money to play. So in principle, you might say a rational gambler might be willing to pay an infinite amount of money. So that's that's the setup of the problem. Uh, this is why it's a paradox, because if you ask this to all real sensible people, no one would be willing to venture more than a few quid. Um, and how much, but how much should, should you recommend someone gambles? Well, um, so your idea is this. Um, number of times that the coin might be thrown, and the probability um, that it's thrown that many times is a half that it's thrown once, a quarter that it's thrown exactly twice. And the prizes you get in each case are two pounds, four pounds, eight pounds, etc. So for the first possibility, you have this concept of an expected reward. That's the long run average that you would get from this particular outcome if it was done repeatedly. A pound for the first outcome, a pound for the second outcome, a pound for the third outcome, and so on. Uh, down to uh, very high numbers of throws with one in a million probability-ish of it being flipped 20 times. Uh, but it would pay the ticket holder a million pounds, so they expect to get a pound. If you add up this list of expected reward, you get the troublesome infinity pounds, double question mark. Looks like rubbish. Um, so the expected reward is this, if you define that as long run average. Uh, but this is a problem because we have to explain why would all sensible people, including, say, me, definitely not offer more than, say, 20 quid for this ticket. And that's the answer, Jethro. I'd go up to 21 quid, and I'll show you why. Okay. And the answer from Daniel Bernoulli was explained as follows. So Bernoulli said, um, I've got this expected reward um, in pounds, but um, pounds um, are not what motivates me. What actually motivates me is a new unit which he invented called the util. So the util a one util is a measurement of how much utility or enjoyment you get from the prize which you receive. And uh, so Bernoulli is like me. If he's given a pound, he'll spend it on tea and he'll enjoy that. And likewise, if he's given two pounds, he's definitely certain he'll drink twice as much tea over the coming few weeks and he'll uh, therefore enjoy that twice as much. Um, and he can enjoy money so that if you give him a million pounds you can get a million utils of enjoyment out of it in the simple case. Um, but beyond that point he realized his greed has been satiated and if he receives a prize of more than a million pounds it's still only worth a million utils to him because by this point he can pay off his mortgage and enjoy a lifetime of nice stuff 
And so the prize of two million pounds or more is still only worth a million utils. I'm putting the cut off at one million for simplicity. And then when, when you try to add up the expected utility, you get a very nicely convergent series, which quickly converges to 21 utility units. So that's the value of the gamble if your greed saturates at a million quid. If you're greedier than that, and the answer to the question does depend on your capacity for greed, if you can imagine enjoying a billion pounds, then you might be willing to pay as much as 30 pounds for the ticket, but not any more than that. Um, and even if you imagine, well, what if, what if a person is infinitely greedy? It still doesn't matter because you can say the economy collapses past about two to the 40 pounds. So there's no point receiving any more prize than that. So that's how you escape having to deal with infinity in the St. Petersburg paradox. You say it's the real world, therefore these infinities don't actually um, come up as something that you have to trade in. So that's one problem. Um, but then can we invent a more complicated paradox where we do technically have to trade in infinities? Um, and we can. And one such paradox is the slightly older Pascal's wager. 